Um, hello, so today we are going to do problems from a uh, weekly contest, a uh, bi-weekly contest 118, this week's bi-weekly contest. The third problem is minimum number of coins for fruits. So you are at a fruit market that has different types of exotic fruits. And these, uh, the prices of this, these are in prices array, that is one indexed. And we have an offer where if you push, purchase the eighth fruit, uh, then you get the next ith ones for free, okay? This is with one indexed, with these indexes being starting from one. Uh, the goal of the problem is to return the minimum number of coins that we need to acquire all the fruits, okay? We want to acquire all of them. Uh, there is one condition here is that, or one, like, detail, which is you can take fr fruit at a position for free if you let's say bought a previous one and still and so have some remaining uh, from your offer there but you could choose also to uh, buy it so that you can get the next i ones for free okay so there is a choice even if you can get it for free you can still buy it so if we take a look at the first example here uh, we could for example buy the first fruit with price of three and the, so we get the next one for free, we get one more fruit for free, and so we could decide to get this one for free and then buy this one, but that would mean we get a total of five. The second option is we could buy this one for three, then next one, even though we could get it for free, we could buy it so that we get the, the one at the two, because this index two, we could get the next two for free, and so we get this one for free. So now the cost is three plus one, which is four, which is smaller. And so that's the strategy that we can take here. Okay, so that's the problem. Um, and what's interesting here in the condition is that the maximum number of fruits is just 1,000. So this means we could technically do something um, that is, um, th that is uh, more than all of them, right? So let's we'll see how we can tackle it. Um, okay, so how do we tackle this? Well, this one is on, on the easier side because for each position, what do we have? We have only two choices, right? We can take it, buy it, or get it from free if we have it from an offer uh, from a previous one that we bought. So either buy it or get it for free if, if from, um, from previous buy we have we have some remaining values we have an offer okay so what does this mean okay so the the main thing to to think about here is if we have three one two the indices start at one so we have one two three so the options are first buy this one three and then you get the next one for three and then you get the third one and uh, the third one you have to buy it so that's five the second option is you got three, and then the second one you buy it, even though you could get it for free because that's an option. But why do we buy it here? We buy it so that we can have i fruits, i next fruit, which is two fruits next that we can um, that we can get for free. So that would be plus. Uh, basically, this one we get it for free, so pretty much four. So this is a better strategy. But we don't know. What if, for example, instead of that, instead of this here, we had Let's say three, five, two. Okay. Um, then in this case, if we take this strategy, then we will have three plus five, which is eight. But if we take this strategy, which is buy this one, get this one for free, and then buy this one, then it's five. So this one is better. So there is no way we can sort of know here. So it's easier, especially since the bounds are small, just up to 1,000 then it's easier to just try all options, right? And so this is sort of like a recursive dynamic programming approach that we can here, we do here because for, let's say for buy with, a, with an index of i, we have only two choices each time. We can either buy, decide to buy, or decide to skip, but when do we know if we get it for free? From the previous position, we need to keep track of how many we can get for free. So let's call that offer count or the remaining offer, right? So that we can know if we can get it for free, so we can try that option. And so for each one of these, well, let's call this actually helper, just to make this 
So if we do that, then helper has for the next position has only two choices. So we can either buy the current one, so that would be prices at i plus for the next position, we will call it on i plus one. What's the remaining offer? Well, we are told that at each position we can get the next i ones. So that's what we do. We pass i because we can get the next i. Now, what about can we get it for free? Well, we can only get it for free if <coughs> the remaining offer is bigger than zero. So if the remaining offer is bigger than zero, then in that case, we can get this one for free. What does it mean get for free? It basically means that we don't pay anything. So we don't add the prices at position i. So we just do a helper at i plus one. Now, what's the remaining offer in this case? Well, the remaining offer is whatever, let's say we were at some position, maybe here, position two. And let's say maybe we had uh, four here, right? So in that case, when we get this one by this one, then we have two. And so at this, when we call for this index, we should have one remaining. So at each posi position, we need to say rem, uh, rem remaining offer minus one, right? Now, we want to get the minimum, so we'll say the best is equal to this, and then we take the min with this one, right? The min of this and best, so we get so that we can get the solution here. And that's pretty much it. Now, the only addition we'll need to do is, of course, memoize, because we will end up visiting the same state multiple, time, uh, multiple times. But that's roughly the, the solution and the idea here. So let's implement it and make sure it passes. Um, okay, so let's implement the solution we just saw in the overview. So what we need is um, we need to create our helper function, right? Which we said i, and then it needs the remaining offers. Um, how do we call it initially? Well, initially we are at position zero, and we have no offers, no remaining offers. So that's what we need to return. What's the base case? Well, the base case is if we are done, which basically means... Sorry, here, since we are indexing from one, this needs to be one, right? Um, so if this is more than the length of prices because we are indexing from one, we don't want to do equal because we are indexing from one. So uh, equal is still a valid index. Um, so if this is the case, we are done. So we just return zero to the, uh, to the caller. And now we will have two options, two choices, right? Either buy. or use previous offer, right? And so here to buy, let's just uh, add to the best value here. To buy, well, we need to pay for buying that fruit. And then we go to the next one. Now, when we buy, we have, uh, we can, we have the uh, next i fruits for free. And so that's what we pass here. Now for this one, we of course, we can only use it if we have some offer. So, for example, at the first position, we have nothing. Um, so we can't buy. We can't get it for free. And let's say, um, let's say if you have, let's say, for example, uh, two, three, four, five. So at this position, you have the next uh, two for free, right? So you can get this one for free. You can get this one for free, but you can't get this one for free. And so we need to know using this remain, remaining offer. Um, we need to know how, uh, if we can still get it for free or not. So we can get it for free if it's bigger than zero. In that case, we just take the min. Um, and then we call for next one and then remaining offer minus one, right? Because we just used it. Um, and even if we didn't use it, we'll still need... Um, yeah, if we didn't use it, then we have to buy. So we'll just press I, right? And so here we need to just return that best value. And that should be it. Now, we said that we need to memoize. You can choose to use either a hash map or in Python, uh, the easiest option is just to use a cache. Okay, um, so let's run this. Uh, looks like there is a slight problem because the index for this is out of range. Well, this is because uh, the problem says it's one indexed, but still Python array need to have to be zero indexed. So we just need to subtract minus one. And we can submit. Uh, 
Um, okay, so it looks like we hit the um, this because we need just to not specify a, a max size here. So we can do that like this. It would be easy if you if you wish to, you could use just a memo here, a hash map, and then you would check if this i position was already computed. If it is, you will return the value. Otherwise, you will uh, compute it and then set uh, at position i set the value to best, right? Um, but yeah, this solution passes. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, if you need one-on-one -on -one coaching for lead code problems and coding interview prep, uh, schedule a session one-on-one -on -one with me on Superpeer. Uh, thanks for watching and see you on the next one. Bye.